Well, we knew there was definitely some monkey business going on here. But this is ridiculous. Hey guys, Ryan Miller is here. Back again for another What If, and this time we are continuing with What If Chi Chi Let Gohan Train Part 3. And I'm pretty sure most of you who actually do watch my videos here on YouTube have been waiting for this because I've actually done a little digging and I know so far it's the most watched What If that I am currently doing. So it's now time to get into What If Chi Let Go Han Train Part 3. <laughs> And of course, as always, a quick recap. Our story begins at the beginning of Dragon Ball Z, just prior to Raditz showing up and Gohan being born. Now, rather than Goku giving in and letting Chi Chi have her way with um, Gohan just being a scholar, Goku was able to plead a case that would allow Gohan to be able to train with him, as well as study and live a more balanced lifestyle where he can play, have fun, as well as train with his father, which would allow Goku to actually get stronger, as well as Gohan learning how to use his key and how to fight, how to fight a lot earlier. Which, of course, led to big trouble for Raditz when he shows up and does his thing, trying to recruit Goku into the Freezer Force and trying to abduct Gohan. He is clearly outmatched by Goku and Gohan and even Chi-Chi, Yes, Chi-Chi actually goes to the reunion in this story because she also joined in with the training sessions with Goku and Gohan because, well, she didn't want to feel left out and she's actually, because she's actually training, it's all like one big family bond, bonding adventure, it, it doesn't hurt for her to socialize. And so... This ultimately ended with Raditz being defeated relatively early and quicker. With Piccolo getting the killing blow at the end, shooting Raditz in the back. Just when Raditz thought he was going to win. Poor Raditz, he cannot catch a break, no matter what what if you put him on. Unless it's what if Raditz turned good by Masako X. <laughs> Which is an awesome what if. Love it, by the way. Alright, so then we moved on with um, Gohan's training with Piccolo, and Piccolo and Gohan were able to get a lot stronger at this point because there was no six months of Gohan needing to do solo survival training in order to learn how to use his key and basically defend himself from all the wild animals and dinosaurs lurking around the area. That was already taken care of with Gohan's training with Goku in this story. So because of that, Piccolo and Gohan were able to go a lot more full out and Chi Chi actually joined in the training as well, getting a lot stronger learning how to fly shoot key blast, which prepared them pretty well for the battle against Nappa and Vegeta, who are of course on their way. Now, as per the vote, vote at the end of um, part one, where it was decided that the Dragon Ball, since Goku actually survives this time, and yes, he goes off the Snake Way anyway to do his training with King Kai, because Kami being the Guardian of Earth, he has um, special privileges like that. It's going to be handy to be Guardian of Earth. Kami, by the way, means God. As Guru would say, pretentious prick. <laughs> anyway. So, with that... In mind, the dragon was used to unlock the latent potential in all the Z-Warriors, which gave them a bit of a significant power boost, which ultimately increased their survival rate in the battle against Nappa and Vegeta. Um, Yamcha, Chaozu, and Piccolo still bit the dust, Piccolo still sacrificing himself to save Gohan, like he does in the story. And, uh, well, we know what happened to Yamcha with the Cybermen, you know, guard completely down, completely vulnerable. No matter how much stronger Yamcha have gotten, when your guard's down, you're completely vulnerable. You could be one million and be taken out by a Cyberman if you're not careful. And, um, and Chaozu, of course, died doing what he did, trying to save Tien and blew himself up. Alright, so, now that we're basically caught up, we ended the last part with Gohan 
up straight after Piccolo's death, Gohan getting his rage boost, which pushed his power way beyond Nappa's, and Gohan actually obliterated him, obliterated him with the Masenko. And Vegeta is just left speechless and is just deciding to jump in there and attack the remaining Z-Warriors and just take them out quickly. But then Goku shows up and instantly nails Vegeta with a Kaioken entrance. And now, per your vote from the end of part 2, Goku and the Z-Warriors all fight Vegeta together. It's not Goku fighting Vegeta alone this time like in the original anime. If that had have happened, then the story would have pretty much played out the same. But this time, well, let's see what happens here. Now, you can imagine it's probably not looking very good for Vegeta at this point, because not only does he has does he have Goku to contend with, he's got Gohan, who's still pretty much in good condition, Chi Chi, who's getting up, Krillin and Tien, who are still recovering, but all of them attacking together, attacking as one, is proving to be true too much for the Prince of Saiyans. Ugh, I can't believe I'm actually losing to these people! A lower class warrior and he's bad of rejects! How will I ever live this down? And the battle is it's still pretty intense, you know, the weaker character is still getting knocked around a bit, but Vegeta just can't really get into his groove to really fight off Goku, whose power level is pretty much on par with the Prince's. And we still get that huge, um, Kaioken times 4 Kamehameha showdown between the two versus the Gallic Gun, the big beam, beam struggle between them. After all, it's not a Goku and Vegeta fight without a big beam struggle. I mean, come on. Anyway, but Vegeta is just like the anime, overwhelmed, especially with the other Z warriors taking pot shots at the prince. And he comes down, he's um reeling and wheeling, he's getting desperate, and he's thinking, huh I know, I'll just form an energy ball and become the mighty Ozuru. But then he thinks, nah, there's just there's just too many of them. If he does that, Vegeta would just be making himself a bigger target. It pro it, it's not going to go as well for Vegeta as it did in the anime where he's able to cripple Goku. But he's just got too much of his friends with him. Too many of his friends with him. And of course his son who bested Nappa. And then Vegeta notices something else. He notices Gohan's tail has grown back. And Vegeta then decides yes, he's going to use the energy ball. But not to transform himself into a great ape. No, he's going to use it and make Gohan change into a great ape. Which will make Gohan go into a frenzy. Because remember, the children, the child saying great apes are always more ferocious and out of control than the adults. This is Vegeta's perfect chance to escape this alive. Vegeta knows it. Vegeta knows he's beaten. He has to concede these earthlings the tactical victory. I'll concede you this time. Have fun dealing with your son, Kakarot! He throws the energy ball and just flies away out of dodge, la laughing uh, menacingly. <laughs> and basically he gets to his escape escape pod and basically evacuates the planet. Meanwhile, Go they're now having a deal with the Great Ape Gohan, who's pretty much going on a really big rampage. And it doesn't last too long because Goku's able to ring Gohan in just like he does in the anime but difference is Goku's in a lot better condition this time he's a little beat up from the fight with Vegeta but he's he's gonna recover from this easily he's not um broken lying down there broken like in the original and so Goku's able to ring him in a lot easier this time while Yajirobe cuts Gohan's tail off remember Yajirobe's hiding around there somewhere too in the original anime, he cuts Vegeta's tail off, but not this time because Vegeta never transformed. Vegeta's flown the coop, and Gohan, Gohan loses his tail instead. As everyone's recovering, they see Vegeta's um, space pod up in the air, and Tien's getting ready to charge a tri-beam and blast the um, 
Saiyan Prince into oblivion, destroy his ship, and Prince Vegeta along with it, but Goku just flies in front of him and says, No, Tien, let him go. And you know the power difference between Goku and Tien. They're, they're gonna they're gonna do what Goku <laughs> says. Don't forget, I'm a Saiyan too. Remember what happened when I let Piccolo go? He's now one of us. He protected my son. It's possible someday Vegeta could learn this lesson too. So, reluctantly, Tien lowers his hand and powers down the tribe beam that he was going to fire. Very well, Goku. But if you're wrong about this, you better be ready to set things right. And well, and then Roshi and Bulma and everyone else appear and they're all off on the way to a hospital as per normal. And of course, with um, Kami gone, they're under the realization that no one, they have to real, um, come to the realization that they might not be able to wish their friends back. Because Piccolo's dead, that means Kami is dead too, which means the Dragon Balls aren't working at the moment. But that's when Krillin comes up with his plan, something that Vegeta said during that battle about... About... They call Piccolo a Namekian. And, um, you know, they come to the realization that these Namics, because uh, after all, it's a Namek who Dragon Balls, it's possible that these Namekians have Dragon Balls too. And so, they're beginning their little plans to head off to Namek. And meanwhile, everyone's pretty much rested and recovered. And... Of course, Bulma tries to, um, tries to summon Nappa's space pod so they can get to Namek, and that blows up just like it does in the anime, after all, that's just one of the funniest moments ever. CRITICAL FAILURE! And of course, who shows up? The dark entity himself, Mr. Popo, has the answer. Uh, turns out uh, Kami may have had like a spaceship or something. I don't know for sure if it's a spaceship, but we can just take that to Namek instead. And of course, that all happens. But the team that goes with Bulma to Namek is Gohan, Chi Chi, and Krillin. So if we get an extra member, Tien was thinking of going, but he and Goku decided it's best they stay back in case Vegeta comes back for round two and they can continue their training and get stronger in the meantime because Mr. Briefs is working on the um, gravity chamber spaceship that Goku asked Briefs to build when, they, when he first got back because he wants to push his power to new heights because you know it's that's Goku for you. Always ready and in need of a fight. <laughs> anyway so with that happen, Bulma, Chi Chi, Krillin, and Gohan are all off to Namek. There is no fake Planet Namek saga. We are moving on. And meanwhile, Vegeta has left on, has arrived on Frieza Planet One and has restored his health and his wounds, and of course gets his effective Zenkai boost, and of course. He's um, picked up how to sense power levels without a scouter. And he, just like the anime, he figures out that um, Nappa had the scouter on the entire time, and Frieza heard everything about the Dragon Balls and everything, and is already on his way to planet Namek. And Vegeta, he's, Alright, Frieza, if that's how you want it, let the games begin. You're not beating me to the prize. And Vegeta's taken off after Frieza in hot pursuit, just like in the anime. And the, our heroes have landed on Namek and their ship gets um, wrecked just like in the original story. And Gohan and Krillin are following off Frieza where they run into Namekians. And meanwhile Vegeta of course has arrived on Namek and he's doing his little one-on-one -on -one battle with, with Kui who he eliminates. Huh. You've been too busy hiding behind Freezer. Meanwhile, I've been to hell and back, Kree. I am much stronger than you. And 
plate is obliterated. Now the biggest difference here is that Vegeta still has his tail. Vegeta doesn't lose his tail this time, Vegeta still has his tail, and that's going to come into fruition later on in the story, and of course we got Chi Chi in addition to the hero's team. And while Krillin and that are uh, so, uh, hiding their power levels so they're not detected by Frieza's men and their scouters, they're slowly pursuing them and they eventually run into the village with where, you know, where they eventually run into Dende and Frieza's terrorizing their village to get the Dragon Ball. And Bulma is going to be able to deal with the situation on Namek a lot easier because Chi Chi is staying with her and trying to keep her calm. And I think that is where we're going to leave things for now for this discussion. So, what do you think? Do you like this part? Do you like where I'm sort of leaning towards this story? Well, we're definitely going to be back with um with part four pretty soon because I've already got a pretty good fresh idea on where I want part four to go and we'll definitely be back you know definitely let me know in the comments how you're liking this story and well I'll catch you later and I'll be back again for another dose of whatifery actually I need to come up with a new new one I mean, we've got the what if Bardock stopped Lord Frieza and the what if Chi Chi left Gohan train there's no more King Piccolo what if King Piccolo won the videos to done? I finished that What If series. And if you want to check that out, it's it'll be in the in the playlist in the description below where it says more content. Anyways, catch us later. And as always, guys, you know, stay safe out there. All right, see you.